Wait, this didn't change. Oh, there we go. Alright, I'm not gonna comment very much on build and stuff. Um, because I'm not super familiar with the builds. Just look at strictly gameplay. Standing in this brush is usually okay, and then if they come around the corner, you can drop a ward, so that's fine. You can like run and drop a ward. I guess you got a ward here. Let's turn Fog of War to your side. All right, so Ash versus Kaisa. Ash has really good range in comparison. Senna also has good range to compete with. You guys are both sort of like a sustain lane. Sustain and then like a little bit of poke. Like Ash has poke, Yumi has some poke, Yumi has sustain. Senna also has sustain and then like poke, but her sustain and poke are on the same ability. Senna, like her Q. So it's good to keep that in mind. Although Senna can just auto attack. So yeah, you have the push advantage. You don't need to hard shove this wave. You can just chill and then like last hit these. Cause if you push it too hard, then you can't really do much with your level two. Like the goal here is to like get level two and then zone them off the creeps. And then you can deny them experience and gold. So that's sort of what's going on, but um, you hit the you hit the wave a little too much, so now it's gonna push all the way into them. And then like right here, you would want to be more forward when you hit level two, because they're still level one. Because um, you know you hit level two on the uh, the third melee as a dual lane. You hit level two on the third melee of the second wave. So when this one dies, you level two. Although. Yeah, the caster died, but it had to be the melee. So then you're not really getting too much out of your level two. They shouldn't they shouldn't be allowed to be this close. Oh well cool, now you know. Uh, oh wow, this is a interesting gank by Fiddlestick. So Senna flashed into exhaust. Huh. Wow. Really interesting. So, in case of ganks like this, if you're far forward, you know, one, one other thing I want to comment on is if you guys use your level 2 properly, this gank might not work, or you guys might be able to get a trade killer too. Because if you are more forward and they didn't back up, and you hit your level 2 and you chunk them out, if Fiddlesticks comes to gank, it's going to be a lot harder for them to follow up if they've been chunked by you guys with the level advantage. Oh yeah. Guaranteed you'll get better or you get your money back. <laughs> Coaching worth the price, yeah. Um, so... Yeah. And feel free to ask any questions throughout. Yeah, this is a super rough start. And then at this point, once you get the wave in, it's weird against fiddlesticks, um, but you might as well just ward somewhere over here. Just in case he goes for like, like a lot of junglers can go for this gank and, and you never really know, especially, I'm not sure what rank you are right now, but sometimes people go for crazy ganks and you want to just have some sort of vision, especially if you're going to walk up this close, because you're getting like all the way up in their face, and they're still both full HP. Your flash is like almost good here, but Fiddlesticks does a good angle on the Terrify, so you get feared down this way. I mean, I respect the flash. It just sucks that you guys were in such a poor position for that that specific gank. 
Alright, Yumi's having fun. Yep, and Yumi will just look for her poke. And that's fine, you want to avoid Senna's Q. Alright, and we see Jungler is going for Crab, which is a little bit sketchy. Um, I think you're fine just staying bot here. Because, hmm. like... For them walking over there, you could just hard shove this wave and you get guaranteed golden XP. Like if this fight was closer or if they were low or something, I'd be fine with you walking over there. But they're still both really healthy. Karthus just dies very fast. I mean, I guess Kaisa gets low here. But the problem is this wave is bad for you. The reason why this wave is bad is because you have like, just by looking at the wave, you should be able to tell that your wave is bigger, but you could also count if you wanted to. Like, you could be like, alright, five casters, one cannon, two melees, versus one melee, three casters, one cannon. This wave is going to push. Let's just ignore what happens in the river. Let's look what happens this wave. Because you're going to miss out on a bunch of golden XP. So all this dies. And pretty much no matter what happens here, you're going to miss out on more than the enemy team. Because your wave is pushing. Because your wave is bigger. Does that all make sense? So you missed out on a bunch. And even though... Um, let's see. Did Kaisa die? Even though Kaisa died, this is still a lot of stuff that you missed out on. Like guaranteed golden XP. So I don't think this was a very good roam. It's not, it's not a horrible roam, but I think you had a much better, um, much better stuff to do if you just stayed bot lane. Because you could, you could have, uh, let's, let's just imagine if you had stayed down here instead of going up there. You could shove this wave out, you could deny them multiple waves, and then maybe the Kaisa still dies anyways. So like Yasuo or something. But let's see, you could stay here. You could use your stuff on the wave, just shove this out. You know, you kill these, you kill this, kill this. I'm just trying to estimate it in my head. So you would have killed it by now, pretty much. And then you get this wave in a tower, and then maybe you could push for a play, you could push the next wave, and you would just want to keep an eye on the map to see if the enemies are uh, coming back towards you. I mean, killing the Kaisa is okay, but at the end of the day, I think it was worth more for you to just stay bot. And that can be hard to recognize. Ever wanted to be a coach and or a commentator for a, a gold team? I mean, I'd be open to doing something like that. Just like doing like group coaching or discussing gameplay. Or whatever. I'd be open to that. Okay, now you want to reset the wave. Which is sort of what's going on. Karthus shows up. Yep, that's fine. And this is... Hmm. This isn't the worst time to leave, because... The enemy wave is actually going to push back towards you, assuming Kaisa keeps hitting this. So this is okay. This is fine, because you guys probably get this drag. You just got to kill bot. And the wave is, is okay for you. So I, I approve of that dragon. It's, it's fine. Recall gets canceled. So you probably just want to run bot now. You want to be careful. Yeah, be careful of the Senna CC. Alright, let's take a look at this. So Senna shows up. At this point, Fiddle could be in the area. Yep, there's Senna. 
Like at this point, you kind of want to peace out. Because your jungler's left, your mid laner isn't really nearby. Even if your mid laner was nearby, you guys could be outnumbered if Fiddlestick shows up. And then you get rooted, which is rough. I don't know if I would want to do commentary. But I'd probably be up for some coaching. Alright, so one thing you want to recognize here is you're level 4, Kaisa's level 5. Always want to be keeping an eye on levels. Okay, that's pretty deep. You guys, yeah, you won't really be able to catch him at that point. <laughs> yeah, 15% fee on free. It's gonna be approximately uh, zero dollars. So yeah, you wanna be careful of Ari here because you're not entirely sure when her ult is gonna be back up. Um, so that's good that you're playing somewhat far back when the Ari shows up. Fiddle is dead now. All right, Kai's is level six, that's pretty scary. So backing up is fine. And when she's running at you like this, you could just throw a W at her, slow her down, try to keep her off of you. Let me see if your W is up. No, it wasn't quite up yet, so that's fine. Yeah, I'm assuming if it was up, you would have you would have just hit her. Yeah, Senna's root goes really far. So I'm not sure how much you click. But I feel like you're not clicking that much. And if you click around more and try to mix up your movement more, it'll help you to dodge dodge these skill shots. Because right now, the way I see it, it feels like you're kind of just like clicking here, clicking here. I mean, it seems like you're clicking a decent bit right here. Um, but it's it's almost never a bad thing to click more. Uh, let me send you this link. Or like, it should be... Here, I'll just send you the link. Never expire, no limit. Generate new link, copy. Okay, so... Um, first thing, be aware of hitting level two, third melee, melee of the second wave, if you have a push advantage, we'll hit level two first. Push forward and try to chunk out the enemy or kill them if possible. Um, and then usually you want to have a slight push advantage. You don't want to push super, super hard unless the enemy is. Um, because if you push super, super hard, you might not be able to punish them because they'll 
be too close to tower. That might not make much sense right now, but as you play and you sort of see this happen, like in some games, if you realize level one, you push the wave super hard and they're under their tower, then you won't be able to abuse them as much. Um, another thing, uh, I think click more slash very up movement to help with dodging skill shots. Um, being aware of what skill shots the enemy has and how they will probably use them. Senna E, for example, very long range, but slow moving. Yeah, clicking close to your character can also be very beneficial. Um, so I'll just like put stars around this. This isn't super important. This is like extra credit. I mean, it's important later, but not super important for now. Extra credit. But uh. Um, be careful with leaving lane when your wave is bigger than the enemy wave because you'll miss out on a lot of guaranteed gold slash XP from the creeps dying. Um, just like in that example we saw a little while ago where you left lane and then the wave is kind of big and then yeah Okay, I'm assuming you're recalling because you have a bunch of gold. The sad thing about this re recall is you're gonna miss this wave. Um, I know you're kind of low on mana here too, but you could just you could just chill and then use auto attacks to like slowly regen up mana, because this is a somewhat sketchy time to leave. And then also just leaving Yumi by herself is, I mean, you guys didn't really know where Phil Six was, but uh, I'd say the main reason why this is a sketchy recall is just because this wave's coming in a tower. It would be better to recall on the cannon wave. Uh, so let me write that down too. Because cannons can tank a lot. Recall on the cannon wave. And then at this point, you'd want to be careful. Even walking forward here is kind of sketchy. Because, like, if Senna's in this brush and she hits you with a root... Because Senna's in here. So that was, that was honestly pretty sketchy that you're up that far. And then now you're kind of following your jungler. And this is a bit of a weird spot to leave the wave. They could be in one of these brushes though. Let's let's see. No, they recalled. They could have been waiting to like cheese in one of these. But either way, this is this is gonna be another time where you would want to push this wave. 
Because you're sort of just missing out on this. This creeps. Another thing is like, if you push this wave out first, they'll miss more. Like you deny more, you miss less, and you deny more. Um, so let's see. General rule of thumb. Push wave before roaming around. You gain more. Uh, I keep feeling like I'm spelling guaranteed wrong. Yeah, it starts, it goes U-A. I don't know why I'm spelling it like this. U-A, Ron T. Okay. Um. <laughs> Yeah, I just had to check for myself. So, push away before roaming around. You gain more guaranteed gold slash XP and deny them of theirs because they miss the creeps under tower if they leave slash follow you. Um, be wary of random dragons. Usually you should go for it if you guys have gotten kills. Um, slash chunked the enemy hard. Slash if they... If you know they recalled, you can take it somewhat quickly. Because this dragon is pretty sketchy. Like, the enemy is highly likely to know because you guys just randomly leave bot lane. The enemy team at this point is going to be thinking, okay, they're probably going to dragon. Like, they even pinged a question mark here on the map because they saw you walk this way. So they're all probably just running directly here. Let's take a look. Fiddle's on the way here. These guys are all just running to drag. And now at this point, you should have tried to position close to this wall so you could flash over, because that's your that's your only escape route right now. Like, as soon as you see Fiddle here, and then Ari shows up and Yeah. Yeah, it looks like you had flash. So then right here we can see you could have pushed in this wave, pushed in the next wave, and then if the enemy bot lane shows up and they're stuck on their tower, that could maybe be a good time to drag. If you push in a big wave and then they're clearing it and then you go drag. But instead, now you missed out on one wave, you're missing out on this cannon wave. And you make it in time for like the rest of the cannon wave, like the cannon wave minus the cannon. So now if we just look at XP, Kaisa's level eight at this point and you're level six. And a lot of that is just because you've been roaming at these times where your wave was bad. And then also you've died a bunch, like that has given her more XP too. But one of the bigger reasons is just because of these roam timings. Like this wave is, is rough for you when you guys leave. Because it's not, it hasn't been pushed all the way into tower. Right here. So now your wave's hitting this. Killing those. Killing this. It's gonna kill this too. So this is all important to be aware of. Uh, 
Um, let's see. Yeah, it's good to just chill here. Kaisa has red buff and she's level eight. So you just want to get your creeps under tower safely. Um, I'm not sure if you thought you could get them in tower aggro there, but yeah. Um, I'm fine with you trying something like this if you think that, like, because I saw the tower was on them for a little bit, but then it falls off. Uh, but at this point, you're like really far forward. And these guys are pretty strong. Like, you know for sure that they have advantage over you. I mean, mainly just by looking at levels, because your items are actually somewhat similar right now. Um, but yeah, just the levels make a big difference. So you don't want to take a fight with them unless you're super advantaged. In terms of like either health or uh, if your jungler shows up when their jungler isn't around. So... Yeah, keep an eye on champion levels because they make a huge difference in fights. Um, yeah. Okay, it's somewhere here you should flash. Not here, you didn't need to flash yet, but once this Ari shows up, she misses charm, that's fine. But then like her Q. Okay, I guess you probably didn't see her Q. And then at this point you're dead. So that's okay. You may already know, but uh, in those situations you wanna be looking for some place to flash. I can understand that one was really difficult. Cause she kind of like had her cue under her body. Okay, in here, if someone, if two people are already in your lane, you should just go to another lane. I guess Yasuo wasn't here yet. You respond pretty quick, so that's fine. Walking bot, walking bot's fine here. If Yasuo was already here, like maybe at this point you can think, um, like if it seems like Yasuo is gonna stay bot, you can just go mid, cause you want someone to be mid to catch this wave. Whether it's you or Yasuo, doesn't matter much. You just want someone to be there. Cause right now, Yasuo's bot, you're bot, nobody's, none, nobody's gonna catch this. And this is a big deal. Even if you guys are diving bot, you know, like that's, that's all fine and good. But missing out on this is a big deal. Looks like the dive works out, so that's cool. Or like it's somewhat worked out. Yeah. Yeah, they just have a lot of damage. So at this point, when you're this far up, you're probably just dead. And this is mainly about like, yeah, you killed two people, but you don't know where these other two people are. So it's not very safe for you to walk up to this tower right now. Always want to be aware of where the enemy people are. 
And if you don't know where they are, you should just assume that they're coming to, to kill you. Like, if you don't know for sure where the enemy team is, just assume they're coming for you. This will save you, like, a lot of deaths. <laughs> Too bad that other guy didn't die. So I could tell you're trying to arrow the Ari there. Alright, and when you're doing objectives like this, when you're auto attacking in general, try to get used to moving in between your auto attacks. So auto the dragon, move, auto the dragon, move. You can also work on A clicking while you're doing this. Instead of just standing here while you're killing the dragon, like practice other stuff. Like practice attack and then move you know or blocking or kiting attack move attack move and then do it with your higher attack speed as well um yeah you might as well just do that stuff All right, no worries. I'll probably just post, I'll, I'll look at a bit more and I'll post it on YouTube and you can check it out. Um, but thanks for hanging out. Let's look at a, like, a fight or something. Alright, you want to get off the cam, minion. When, when the team starts fighting, just ignore the minions and, and only focus on the fight. But like here, the fight is going, you should just be running straight up there. Okay. Yeah, you're... You're somewhat weak right now, um, have a good chunk of gold on you, and also that fight just started in a weird spot, so you couldn't get that much done. You also didn't have your ult, so that's understandable. Let's look at another one. Okay, playing, playing too scared here. For sure, playing too scared here. You have a lot of range as Ash. I don't know if you're just misclicking. But you could definitely be autoing the Aatrox and probably kill him. And you could use heal. Like, you don't have to use it on Karthus. It's fine if he dies, because then he can... You know, that's another thing. Karthus is dead, and he's still getting damage off, because he's Karthus. So, that whole time, you should have been autoing Aatrox. He would have been dead by now. He still ends up dying. But it's it's still a mistake on your part to to just be running in circles there instead of autoing. And then here you want to keep following your Yasuo. Maybe you just didn't realize the fight was still going. But you could have kept following this and, and helped out with the fiddle. That's okay though. If you knew he was dead... I mean, I think he's dead. 
If you knew Fiddle was gonna die, that's fine, because he's the only one left on the map. Okay, well, he, he ends up dying. And then here, another example, you could keep just moving. Like, hit this tower, move. Hit it, move. Hit it, move. Hit it, move. Pay attention to your attack speed and try to move in the space that's, like, between the auto attacks. So, like, you're attacking kind of quick, but there's definitely some time to move in between. All right, let's look at one more. Even though it may not seem important or useful and it may be annoying to practice it, it'll help you a lot in the long run. Just being able to move between auto attacks. Very useful. Okay, so ulting her when she comes in is right, and then you don't really have summoners, so. Yeah, that's rough. Let's look at another, let's see what this is. Okay, this already looks like a spot where you're playing too safe. Yeah, there's five people here. You don't want to walk this way. At this point, you might just want to walk all the way around. Because it seems like your team is fighting. So you walk all the way around this way because the fight's breaking out. You could also just flash the wall. I would, I would be fine with that, but... Because you want to contribute to the fight. At this point, it's really late, though. Like, the fight's pretty much already over. Hold on. I want to see if you use your flash properly here. Alright, if you're going to flash when Aatrox flashes, you should just wait until he uses something. But that's okay. Alright, that guy's doing a lot of damage. Alright, another, another fight. I, I just want to see what happens here. Okay, stood still for a little bit. Probably just looking at the fight. Too bad the arrow misses, that's kind of rough. I'm fine with you shooting that arrow. I think that arrow is fine. Even though it missed. It's, it's like the right idea. And then here I think you should just come in the game. Because these are pretty long death timers. Okay. So I'll give you a couple of main things to work on. Um, avoid playing too safe. Be careful. 
taking random dragons at random timings to have a good reason to take dragon. Um, five. All right. 